now. I did. Now. now. Yeah. Are Are you feeling dorky? No. Are you? Well, yeah, I got a little leftover in me. Oh, you got leftover. Oh. Yeah. This funny guy. I'm Vinny Vernacular. Hey, and I'm still Flash somebody. Who knows uh, who? Vinny, Vinny Fake Spear. I, I called you Fake Sphere. Yeah, but you called me Fake Spear one time. It was really yeah, good. That was a long time ago. I remember yeah, that. Yeah. So it kind of it yeah. fits in. Look, before we get to the intro, let me just say this yeah. Yeah, yeah. from Tramp. Yeah. said that language is a living thing. It grows to meet new needs. Do you know Shakespeare and the poet Robert Burns just made up words which are now in use? Ha, that's kind of what I do. That's why I'm Vinny Shakespeare. And she also says, do you know what a poot is? Or he does. Whoever the sheep tramp is. Okay. You Dark table. Dark table. What? It's like Putin, right? I guess, Vinny, you and your political stands. Anyway. This is uh, Flash at the Dork Table on the 20th of July. <laughs> Get I like saying it like that. July. <laughs> hey, I, I had a meltdown because when I was opening the broadcaster to prepare for the show, I must have typed something in wrong. And it brought up this new window I'd never seen before. And I thought, holy yeah. shit, what have I done this time, right? And, uh, and I get on, I got on the RLM and was going to say, hey, Grim, give me a hand. And instead, I just closed everything down and started it over. <laughs> and it, it was just something I entered wrong. So I, I'm learning. I'm getting somewhere with this damn computer stuff. <laughs> it's not whipping me as easily as it used to. You said easily. Ding, 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 ding. Winner, 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 winner. So, right off the bat. You want to say hi to the bots and the bodies to be? We got plenty today in there to gather in uh, festive typing days. Well, I don't know what I'm talking about here. All right. Bar, I was stalling because I couldn't find my window thing. Barman, Beetle, Grimnir, Moose Girl, Brackets, DC, Anti, Esmo, Beth Z, Chalcedony, Graham Z, I be Don C, Java Doctor 2, J Dread, <laughs> Meister Brow, Miss Kate, Rob Works, The Bubbler, Robes, Vanna White, Vinny Vernacular, Weather Dork, The Phantom, and Well Then, that's Mike in Salt Lake City. <laughs> Follow me again. Circle, that's my wife over there. Hey, honey. And Cyborg Noodle, D Dork Cakes is here today. Hey, mental. Me, Frump, Frump, Ed, Gromit, Jays, Nines, Jays, Kiss, Ponder Gander. Hey, Vinny. Prince, Hi. I don't know who Prince is. That's a new one since a couple of weeks ago, I think. Yeah. Pones so, us. Know them. You know who that Prince is? I don't know. It seems uh, like a... clever smut as and fan meter. Well, those are the typographicals for you to typograph with today on the and, real liberty uh, media dot com chat during the dork table where we take the life very seriously here, folks. Very seriously. Indeed. If you've come here to fuck around, I suggest you pay attention. <laughs> we're every. we're experts at fucking around, aren't we, Vinny? Very, very. I, I listened to your show yesterday. Yeah. Do you know did what? You like do you know what I didn't hear on your show yesterday, Vincent? Four twenty report. Your voice. <laughs> oh, Chelly knows his shit, and man, he didn't. You got him in, in there to talk about it, and he did. And yeah, it was. I asked me questions that I didn't answer. <laughs> I know it was like at the end of the show, you you were like seemed like it, you were glad it was finished. <laughs> But it was no. a good show. I, I'm just no, saying no, because no, you, you and I've worked together. Yeah, but you usually and, say more. No, but the thing was, see, I wanted to bring in um, expert opinion, and, and Chuck is that's very yes, good. he knows his shit. He's and, got uh, he got an award from the uh, yeah. whatever thing. I'd have to go look at it there in Dallas for you know JFK uh, research, and then uh, he uh, he spoke to a class of students hmm. and yeah. uh, got a letter there from the professors really. Uh, Nice, well, nice. what made you decide that he was going to do a show with me without asking me if 
I was going to do the show first. <laughs> well, you were the first person I thought of. He goes, uh, hey, I want to do some cross radio. And, oh, okay. Uh, like cross dressing and, uh, you know, hook me up with some folks. And I go, Flash, you're, I went right to you, very the, first person. The first, yeah, <laughs> the two o'clock show that I've been. Have you been paying attention to the damn In a Perfect World? You would know. If you listen to the show, what's going on with the show? Because I talk about it on the show. Yeah, but I, it, life interrupted, man. I'm not. I'm not upset. It was just you guys seemed upset when you're taking shots at me about not being there. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm usually available. I know it's like the fluke <laughs> of flukes is what it was. It's a, it's a, no big deal. Things happen. No, but yeah, I could have put uh, Chuck on some other radio, but I've kind of really been out of the. Uh, connecting voices uh, aspect here for a while so that, that's something they need to warm up you know summer's not far from being over and then i gotta go back to being serious and um, yeah well i i, I have my opinions about what uh you guys talked about yesterday but nothing as in detail as chuck so like you i would just be asking a question and then quiet for 20 minutes I actually said more than I, I wanted to because I really didn't want to interject any of my uh, 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 my opinion towards uh, certain ideas. But it's well, out. I don't know. The truth is still whatever the truth is about shit. It really seems to me it doesn't matter because people have their preconceived notions and their indoctrinations and their teachings and their beliefs and all that crap that we got inside that tells you what to believe whatever that is we got it yeah, no. workings i uh, i had watched a few videos on uh, mm. conspiracy and the minds of people that believe in conspiracy and of course most of them try to deride the person as off and uh being uh, a product of evolution and mm. the uh, defaultment the debasement of human uh, the human mind into where uh, like a person like me, where I recognize faces and rocks, right? You see all. Oh stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. You get all. Yeah, I know you get a kick yeah, in that. It's some aspect of the brain, you know, that uh, rationalizes and looks for sense and order. So, uh, in our confirmation bias of that which we see about us, we're looking for uh, for that sort of thing. So it, yeah. it would be said that uh, conspiracy theories have an appeal when we're uh, looking for conf confirmation bias. Yeah. Well, maybe it's a, a it's a matter of how much time you spend with these problems that you have, that makes them whatever they are. No problem. Time flies. That's my biggest problem. It goes so fast. No, yeah. well, I was leaning more towards Never something only. in particular. Well, <laughs> like we've got all these we got all these topics we could talk about, uh, from abortion to uh, in, what do you call them, the inoculations to banking. To, you know, you start here and you can think of 30 things. Well, and, I would have to say in, in that sense, then the uh, media would be my problem. OK, well, what I was getting at, Vince, is there's too many topics to be any good at one topic. They've got us inundated in too much crap. So you can't it's very difficult to specialize in one area and then have a, a good amount of knowledge about everything else. It's not possible. That's what a specialty thing is about in the first place, because uh, we're so over over uh, exposed to all this drama and trauma in society. You know, I get that here from like Grimner Moosey, uh, for, for instance, about uh, and, and you know, over all these years I've been doing radio. Uh, it's only, you know, in short recent history, I decided to put that focus on the Bundys because it is a duty and obligation. You know, as a witness and a judge advocate, and it is very serious. To you, uh, yeah, I understand that. And there are people of your, you know, mindset in that in that area that agree with you. And I gotta that, read. You gotta, you gotta also give me my ground because I'm, I'm kind of against in the in the overall everything that you want to protect. I'm not saying destroy. Well, yeah, I am saying destroy it. This, I would say, disband all. Formal forms of government, shrink them down to 150 people, and if it gets bigger than that, destroy it. It's too big. And, and I believe, and I, I, I'm going to read you this right here. And, and what I'm what? getting at is uh, that which, uh, what you say it, that uh, I have a problem with. Yeah, is, yeah. So I've had 
the opportunity to be uh, face to face with these people, even trap them in elevators. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. And Max yeah. Bernstein was one of the, yeah. the people in there, Maxine and uh, Ken Ritter and uh, Ryan Lance. I, R- Ryan Lance gets my best uh, for personality with the uh, uh, Southern Poverty Law Center and uh, uh, writer there. But, Hmm. I like the guy. I'm a Marlboro cigarette. Oh, but, you were bumming cigarettes off of people too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, man, I was right there. And, well, you know. yeah. See, that's that's the gift too in itself. Because people like you, I don't know what it is. I'm probably to a degree one of them. Where it, it's never about how much money did I bring to the party to play. Because I can always bring more than just money, and people depend on that, rather than me, you know, being able to buy everybody a lot of drinks. My contribution's different. You make you, you follow in the point? Yeah. Well. Yeah, we all have we all have our own. That's exactly, our own. and right, and and as and as time's gone on, right, society has beaten down everybody that's got any kind of independence in this life the first thing you're not going to find an independent person having is a lot of money or access to a lot of money because it's not the interest you know you got to be a special kind of greedy and selfish to acquire a lot of money that's what, saying that's what i think you're for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than a man. okay and it's still the people that preach that kind of stuff are still wealthy so wealth is measured wrong we're we're just from the day we're freaking able to speak man we're we're just taught how to do everything absolutely the opposite of how it should be done that's what i've grown up to believe at the end here yeah yeah we we all have our niche well i'll give you an example Today, I wanted to go to uh, the far side of town to go get something from a particular store that that store has it. And the other store, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So I didn't want to be bothered with having to maybe go. So I just decided to go. You know what I mean? So it's sprinkling and it's just uncomfortable and it's humid and all this, that and the other. But I made my trek to my little store and got home. (laughs) <laughs> and along the trip to the store today uh what we have a, um we got a hobo i guess he's a professional beggar he's that's his his position in the society and the women bring him food and <laughs> he's really popular with people they re- they they sit and they talk to him he's romanian but of course he speaks danish and like two or three words of English, but he just thinks the world of me and people, they treat him like he's belongs here. <laughs> so I'm encountering these things before the dork table and they put me in a good like, mood. Like the emperor of San Francisco. I I don't know how you mean that. <clears throat> That's a huge needle. Says Grimner. Hey, let me tell you the mm. rest of this story of what I was talking about. Okay. Finally. Take over. <laughs> Bernstein. Um, let me throw, scroll back up to the top of the thread. Anyways, in the, the poots, and uh, that went with that earlier quote about poots. I, I really don't get her point. Do you know what a poot is? I know what the poots are. A fart, as, right? The, yeah, the acronym for... Uh, fart. Well, no, as far as the Bundyites, we'll call them. Oh, well, you know it from the name of it. You're already knowing it's derogatory. Right, right. So, so I took I, it and I yeah. Yeah, right. John... Uh, uh, I'm looking at John Lamb's name here. Um, Brand Thornton and uh, uh, sorry, uh, Captain Carl and I mm. put that together. But anyway, so here is uh, Roger Roots and John Lamb and uh, uh, Maxine Bernstein did an article and said started out with uh, convicted felon Roger Roots talking about him being on a case. But anyways, uh, I I had said that uh, I. They was talking about getting responded to, talking to that because uh, Roger had given her, her Maxine Bernstein, an invitation into a debate, and uh, they say, well, she doubts she uh, accepts it. But, but I, I said, uh, I like Maxine. She responded to me in private conversation a few times, and there's a few others in M- MSM that uh, give no response at all. Name dropper. They know who they are. 
But uh, the sheriff, Sky Reeves, says, um, why do you expect reporters to respond to you? I comment on stuff on reporter Twitters and certainly don't expect a response. Hmm. So I don't mean to respond to me on every Twitter or anything like that. But like I said, in a uh, private conversation, you know, contacting like Maxine Bernstein and, and a few others that uh, people have chosen to regard and others completely ignore me and I get zero uh, response. For Leah Satilli and her new Bundyville Part 2 podcast, um, they, they had a serious typo in uh, in their thing there. They were saying the next release date, release date was in June instead of July. So uh, I popped over and uh, give her the heads up on that. And so they fixed it the next day, but never a thank you. Whereas with like Pro Writing Aid, I found a mistake in their uh, their documents and uh, let them know and they fixed it and got thanks. And with uh, with Bit, Bit Shoot, me and Rob, uh, it was down this morning. You guys was okay over there. Yeah, uh, yeah, because I checked it and it was running. Right. Yeah. So anyways, I contacted them and they wanted more information and boom, they uh, rerouted uh, stuff to the southern U.S. and got her up and going again. I guess Rob was right there getting too much traffic so I, I make contact and yeah. you know i've been face to face and so i say in his response why why would i expect somebody to respond and i say it's a uh, i was there kind of thing i i guess i would say in an honest response from media that has a responsibility to those that hold them to account mm. anyway some do and some don't i said maxine has my highest regards and she that she uh, gave informative reports on the trial with very little personal inflection. Mm -hmm. She really developed her writing school skills. Uh, I think from uh, when she was held to account by uh, Kelly Stewart and mm -hmm. took her to that, that picture I've shared, but uh, she's like, Oh crap. You know? Kelly's all up in her butt, but that's it. That's, that's my thing right there. What I have you know what I saw this morning, holding their feet to the fire. That was a hashtag. I used. Yeah. But what, you know what I saw this morning when I came on the RLM? We had a uh, we got a new character named Rituals. He said he that he had been awake since two in the morning, so he's over here in Sweden. But he's on the other side of us in Sweden. Yeah. And he said that <laughs> Gooberzilla, who's an insomniac, was probably on the internet, and, and him and and Goober were chit chatting, kept him busy while you know because he couldn't sleep. So there was somebody on RLM. <laughs> For somebody in Sweden to chitter chatter with, and then right. we came in at the end of it all. Yeah, so we got a new we got a new character. See what's going right. on with yeah. popping in for a while. Right, but these chat rooms are tough. Come on, it, I, the topics, the characters, the uh, the behaviors people carry. Please, yeah, yeah. It takes a lot of uh, hmm, Iggy, Supported. nah, Iggy power, something like that, where you can. Nope. Because I read a lot of stuff that I haven't iggied people, you know, and I just read their stuff, but I don't care. There's Doesn't, a new word. What? I'm Vinny Fixpeer, man. Hmm. Yeah, Dude. but it's just some people, they can type whatever they want, and I don't care. And other people can type what they want. It, sometimes it rubs me raw. Like the that vibration shit, where I really don't like it. And I go, wow, what the fuck do I care? I don't know. But does it, you know, the ability to not let things bother you, it's selective or something. I don't know how to put it. Maybe it's the Rob thing where it's that vibration that you can't physically identify. You can't mentally identify it either. You just know something's off, but you can't put your finger on it. You know what I'm yeah. saying or not? Yeah, it's, it. uh, well... Yeah. It's like if you were told that what you were headed for when you were going to court before you went, it would not have prepared you for what you actually think you saw. Yeah, because we hear this fake news, the mainstream, the clap, uh -huh. but until you get up there and you're sitting there and seeing the same things that they're seeing mm -hmm. and see where they choose to highlight the information conveyed um, uh, where I said that Maxine showed uh, very little uh, self-infliction in, into her writings where she had actually evolved as a writer past that uh, no matter and, and you can't hold it against somebody as long as they're honest about it but we all have opinion and when we're uh, 
making statement or reporting, uh, bringing from one spot to another this information, uh, uh, we're going to have some self-reflection in some more than others. And the Bendyville podcast, part two, uh, Leah and Ryan did a lot better job. Uh, but they, hey, it's 420 somewhere. Ding, 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 ding. I did. I was stirring my tea. Oh, wait, you know what? I want to. bringing fruit, right? I got I got moose and um, dork cakes interested in my little 150 idea. But I, I didn't explain very much of it. It's enough to really have a, you know expect anybody to, to understand what I totally mean by it. It's just a, a number. It's a small number to identify a problem. And the problem is all the things that we buy to survive are sold to us through agents of people that we'll never meet. And I believe that if we knew the people that grew the food that we eat, slaughtered the meat that we eat, Put the water on, you know, in the system that we drink out of, and we knew these people and looked in their faces and knew their children. That that balance of being treated honestly would tilt a great deal. And and the reason that we suffer in society is because of the growth and the anonymity of not knowing where your shit comes from, and you have to trust the stranger. Period. And then look at all the damage is done, inoculations to laws. It's, it's all a crap. It's all shit because it's too big hmm. sorry Vinny but I just felt the desire to try to explain that in some detail where it made a little bit of sense instead of one of my wacky numbers out of nowhere did Thank I lose you, you completely though no, no. Um, you know I asked in the, one of my wake up in the middle of the night things to, here a couple of days ago has mm -hmm. anybody ever killed anything they killed you know a duck, because we're killing ducks here. Yeah, I, just, I've killed animals when I was younger. I just beat dorks out on the, the duck there. I got, got two ducks, is uh, Vinny Vinector. Oh, you're talking about the pretend ducks? Uh, yeah, but I'm wasn't. also talking about the real ducks. I mean, have you ever killed a real duck? Not a duck, kill, rabbits. Rabbit, or yeah, live rabbits. rabbits. Years I mean, ago. I had to put an animal down, like a, you know, a dog or a cat. No, but I've had people accidentally kill their animals and then be so squeamish about it that they begged me to help them, so I had to do the dirty work. But I don't enjoy it or anything like that. I'm not like a Jeffrey Dahmer and, you know, save the liver of the dog in my freezer for so I could play with it at night. But I did the dirty shit because I was the one that was there to do it, I suppose. Had to be done. It wasn't like, and you know, you see, some poor guy runs over his own animal. Of course, he's not going to be in a frame of mind to handle dealing with it. It's devastating, an accident like that. And I know it sounds petty. Oh, it's just a dog. Well, it was his dog. You know, a couple of just, years, couple of years with a dog makes you kind of friends. A long, long time ago, and she had a, a cat, and she was a small cat, mama cat, was pregnant, and. Uh, um, just like it was all going bad, he was dying and couldn't birth, and uh, he was all like all freaked out. So what we did was put her in a toad sack and uh, put the exhaust in there and focus in there. Figured that was the the uh, the most humane. Well, I don't I don't know. I see. I have no physical experience with death to tell you. Well, if you slap them in the head with a brick at thirty miles an hour, it's going to kill them. I don't know, because there might be that one person that can survive that thing and just be a vegetable forever. So, hmm. I, I, I try to not put myself in positions where I have to make judgment calls on life and death in the first place. Because we got this easy society. We don't have to do the killing anymore. Yeah, you can hire right. it out. You can sub out, you know, just like every any other society, you can sub out the shit you don't want to do to somebody else for a fee. Or a service, you know, like if, say I didn't want to do my own yard work, I could find somebody to try. Hey, I'll do your yard work if you, you know, if you do this for me, I'll do that for you. And but I'm in Denmark where that kind of negotiating is not so common with a foreigner. I would like to hire you to clean the windows in my basement. Please. See what I mean? Everybody has, yeah, everybody's got that one thing that they wish they didn't ever have to do, but they do it. And when I was in America, one of the skills that I have was 
finding people in businesses that needed specific help in that area of somebody somebody I knew had a skill and I would find a way to use that skill. So you need, and you did a lot of lumping. Oh yeah, lumping on the way when I was in my 20s, but once I once I realized the the I guess like Trump, you know, the beauty of the deal, how to put things together and get everybody to give you a profit just because you're the one that was the instigator of it all. That's Could, why I always work for myself almost all. Well, I called it work for myself. I didn't do anything except talk to people. Hey, you do this for this and this for that and the other for the other. And go to a few bars and, you know, entertain. So, hmm, I don't I know. Work. The best work when I paid uh, piece work it, with uh, stipulation of perfection. Oh, uh, well, see, now I'm I'm getting old and I'm married and I wouldn't even uh, I probably couldn't even do the things I could do 30 years ago. You know, don't they don't even come to mind now. Yeah, now it, it was sprinkling, not even raining. And I'm so old. I was standing under the tarp because it was raining. I went, wow, what a change. Did I smoke that hoe, baby? I didn't. No, I didn't. I thought you said it was 426 minutes ago. Yeah. Then you don't even know if you smoked it. You're plenty high. <laughs> You're higher than you think. Maybe I put, put it down. the pipe down and step away from the keyboard. You're a danger to yourself and others. <laughs> so. <laughs> hey, how do you like being a carbon-based life form on planet Earth? It's uh, it's crystalline. Um, can I ask you a question? Yeah. How do, you, how do you know you are a carbon-based life form on planet Earth? Because I was told so. By who? Me? Yeah, you just did. Too. I'm your leader then, right? Can I, can I run your life now? Okay. You could, be, you could be one of my evil minions in my death cult. Just let me ask my wife if you can join. No. What's it going to cost? <laughs> she said, no. <laughs> you can't join my evil death cult, Vinny. My wife, my my wife own... said no. <laughs> I can't, if, I, if we can talk her into it, can I have my own cat? <laughs> he says, if we could talk her into it, no. can he have No. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. Her cat. Well, start that, with cat. But see, that's what I mean is... Uh, <laughs> There's just this, in this unreal life that I acquired over the last, I don't know, seven, eight years, right? I've managed to find like a, a reality to it. And it's my own personal reality. There's no peers in my reality. I live a completely unique life amongst everybody I know. <laughs> Both on the electronic world and the physical world. And I don't have any enemies anywhere. Nowhere. Mm-mm. Not, not even your pretend enemies. No, no. The electronic, uh, the I, what I was to call them, the distraction squad. No, no. it finally, I, see, I've been wrestling with this for years, trying to figure out what is the point of what these people do. You know, because I'm, I'm like you. I, I don't ban. I iggy. I don't prohibit. I don't use. You know, I don't tell you don't do something. I'll tell people I wouldn't do that. I don't do that. And then, then they're going to do what they want anyway, right? I like to say it like this. Are you stupid? Are you seriously <laughs> about to do that? <laughs> wow. Uh. That'll stop a person quick because I don't care who you are. <laughs> says, are you stupid? Yeah. Stop and look back at him. That's that Southern. Yeah, you got that Southern slap to you. I don't, I don't think I have that. If I said that to somebody, they'd get seriously pissed off at me. I don't think I would be standing uh, solid if, if I said that to people, especially here. These Danes, man, I'll tell you one thing. Of all the places I've lived, there is there is just like this, I don't give a flame fuck about these people. <laughs> they're nice and they're cordial. They'll help each other and they work together. But beyond that, there's this like, they don't take this as seriously as I do. And I try not to. Sounds like fun. Hey, I'm going to refill my cup. I'll be right back. Well, any place where you can, you know, live amongst this this kind of uh, mixture of people. And I find I find new new people to, to uh, encounter all of the time. Today, it was a, 
I don't know. This guy's name is Jerry. I, he even made a, a point of explaining to me why he he's Danish, but his name is Jerry <laughs> because his mother had a sense of humor. <laughs> well, my wife has a unique name as well. And not only that, but they're the same age, too. He's older than her because he said, I'm 42. I was born in 1977. And he was speaking English and all happy to have a little opportunity to, to speak English and show people that, you know, just because you're down and out doesn't mean you're an idiot. You call me an idiot. I just walked in on that. <laughs> no, I'm saying that people that live rough here, uh -huh. you know, even though they may not be treated like pariah, there's still that underlying, you know, uh, people look down at me because I, I live on the system. And this guy just wasn't all that shy about it. He said, hey, fuck the system. I'll use the system every day I can. Well, uh, Rich was talking about that there and over there. had uh, I guess they got a good socialist program there. And uh, Where's he at? Switzerland? No, he's in, Den in Denmark here in Fredericktown. No, the no, no. Rituals is in. Ah, oh, there he is, too. Hey, I hear Flash. Got carried away. We're just talking oh, about I always it. get carried away. Well, uh, all I mean is... Uh, People, you, water seeks its own level. There's just something about that. And there's this thing called distraction. And I'm starting to get the idea that I'm not so much uh, attracting the distraction. I'm in the way of the distraction. I'm, I'm what the distraction is there to create. And if I play in it, then I'm working for it. And if I can avoid it, then it'll eventually die and go away. But... It's so tempting to throw the one-liners at the adults. I don't have that kind of self-control. <laughs> I'm a rude old prick, you know? Don't you think, sir? What are you going to do? I try to control my temper, you know, and try to behave myself, and then I get on the Internet, and all of a sudden, that little smart-ass little fucker comes out and says, you know, watch, hold my beer. Let me show you how this is done. And it just gets worse and worse instead of stopping. It goes on for hours. And I, I haven't got that kind of discipline about me at this age to just stop it. And I don't know why, so I figure if it's got my attention, it requires it. But it is a distraction from reality, truth and honesty and all that kind of good stuff. To look at, to join the dark side and be a hypocrite. Hey, uh, I but, Larry Woods, our friend. Ah, Larry is... Well, my brother fucked me over with Larry as far as I'm concerned, but uh, Larry's got nothing but good for everybody. Uh, yeah. And I can't help him. I'd love to be in a position to help a guy like that, but, there, you know, what can I do for Larry now? Nothing. Well, I'm going to... Uh, he's done radio with Chuck before, but uh, I want to get him together. There's good. Oh, man, yeah. He's from, he's from over there. Sweden too, I think. Uh, hmm. Let me see here. I've got him in. Uh, I haven't been who doing is Skype for a long time. Jimmy. He's Jimmy. from over. Yeah, this guy. He's. I think he's from Sweden. But anyways, he's a big 9/11 uh, and conspiracy theory debunker. Yeah. So that's what I'd like to do is put him with Chuck. Uh, uh, he's not been. Uh, he's told me he's not done anything for a while, and he's uh, got an older mic. So. We'd have to do a little test here and stuff. But I would like to put him with Chuck. I'd like to put Chuck on with uh, uh, Thomas Lacavar Stewart. Uh, Don't so, know who that is. Uh, yeah, he's uh, he's my friend from Bunkerville that does radio at RBM. Oh. Yeah. Well. Do you, do you know Daniel Lewis Crumpton? I think you would like him. I, see, I'm really bad with names. I may. I mean, I, I don't know. I've listened to so many people over so many years, and the only thing I really think I care about is the results. You know, the, the words don't, who wrote them, what they mean. I just want to see an answer to the problem. What What's going to solve this? And Daniel's I, an incredible writer. He's an author, wrote a book that, that was really good. It's called After the Flood. Okay. But it works in aliens and uh, mythology and mm -hmm. biblical lore and lore of other uh, societies, all the. Uh, culminating events it was uh, one of the best books i ever read mm. uh, he's a friend of uh, choco chili mm. they've done a lot of radio together now I, I well 
some of the people you just mentioned, Chuck Ocelli, for example, he would understand it's a lot easier to corrupt a big group than it is to corrupt a small group. It's easier to infiltrate a big group than it is a small group. So, oh, yeah. yeah, right? So all these common sense ideas that po politics has just proven to us through the, the lies and the cover-ups, now everybody knows. Well, when you're that big, it's impossible to prove that so-and-so was responsible. Three people n underneath you, you know, and then they start making excuses and making new laws to fit the crime that they committed. And we're all left in the dark and don't really know what's going on. We get these newspapers or TV shows or Internet links. And whatever is truly happening is usually a thousand times worse than what we actually read. Yeah. Or get told about, like this fluoride thing. Right. I'm sure everybody's sick to fucking death about me harping on fucking fluoride. But show me one area in life where fluoride has helped anyone. There See, you go. See, that's one of the things that they're, like with the Bundyville uh, Part 2 podcast, pointing out uh, people that are conspiracy theorists and include that people that question vaccines and the, the adding of the fluoride to the water, people that talk about chemtrails, uh, and then they go to uh, where what would be more considered more controversial uh, mm. people that question the moon landing, 9-11. Mm. Uh, uh, Everything and, you've said, I question all of it. But if you question that, see, then, then you're, you're a wacko. Right. Yeah. That's why I've got, you know, the little bit of uh, crowd that I got on the shows that I do solo. Shit, that's because Grim puts me out there. But beyond that... Well, the people that are open to the, my ideas about how I see the world is very small. It's never going to be huge. It's going to be, always be a fringe, fringe, fringe. But the quality is good. Yeah. Hell, I got damn rituals from uh, Sweden slapping me on the back for doing a good shit on the radio today. I thought, well, that made me feel better. Because I know there's just, it's not going to ever be, hey, listen to this. This guy knows what he's talking about. It's going to be, whoa, this is a twisted fucker. Because people, they take like ideas like personal responsibility and they turn it into a financial situation. And that's not <clears throat> how I particularly look at personal responsibility. Because... Uh, I guess let me get, use my cat. Can I do that as a fair example of how important I am in life where, and money does not play a part in it? Are we going to have to put animals may have been harmed? No, 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 part? no, no, no. Because the SPCA will definitely uh, no. hear this. No. The cat. The cat. The, cat the, doctor. the doctor. Dr. Cooper, the cat. Yes. He's partial to me. And I'm like the most unloving human being you can probably find. But the cat just adores me. I mean, when I'm around, he's rubbing all... He marks his territory on my pants legs. and He's got this chair the dog used to sit in, but he chased the dog out of it so that he could sit in it. So when I'm here, he can, you know, gobble up all my humanity. <laughs> so the, the po I guess the point is, is my being here is the part that I play in it. And all the other stuff outside of that is immaterial. It doesn't have any value. It does well, if you want like it to. Or, but huh? No way. Huh? Morty. How do you mean? Like morning? Just like traveling the universe and popping in. Right yeah, well, there. pretty much, you know, I've I've been I, in my life in my opinion, I've been where I was needed to be to do the things that I accomplished in the periods of time when I was where I was at, and then it was t finished, time to go somewhere else. But then I get here, and it's it's not there's no ending to it. It's a constant because of Cirque. See, Cirque's the thing that keeps me where I'm at. Extra element. Right, but it's the com Finding. the combination of me and Cirque made this little house, and brought the dog and the cat and everything together. And the way it, it all works is it's on a different level of understanding than money. 
that's I guess that's what I'm getting to. You can't do it with without money in some people's minds, but in other in other levels of reality, it's necessary. <laughs> it's a quality of life that you bring to the thing that you're in, and that's what matters more than how you know. If I'd have been rich, 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 I would have never met Cirque in the first place. So I was just you know comfortable enough to make it here to to meet her and all that kind of stuff. I could do things on my own. But uh, rich, rich, no, 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 no. Don't even have that kind of desire. You know, I just want comfort. So in my mind's eye, what I am is the, the I guess, the glue to keep the thing I'm in together. That's kind of e egotistical in a sense, I suppose. You know what I did yesterday? And I do a lot of days. Uh, run down, you fell run on down, something? Run down to the river, uh -huh. jump in jump in and go swimming yeah well that's because you're an outdoor fella yeah that's that's pretty rich right there i wouldn't do it anymore really loud. that's that's yeah. rich to me. yeah but what makes you do it you just get an idea and just follow it yeah you know, i usually try to stay in the flow well how does so, jumping in the river down at the end of your road fit in the flow not the end of it. We gotta go way off the road. No, <laughs> okay, know. wherever you went. Hey, if we're after, hey we're Becky's after. here. I haven't seen Becky in a while. Hey, Becky, welcome aboard. Where's she at? Oh, I'm on RLM. Let me get back over here. S Becky, yay! She came Boy, in just forty minutes into the program. Hey, let's do it now. Uh, like, do it now. Hey. I guess you do yeah. whatever you want. I don't know. I was just trying to. Dirt, dirt, dirt. So all I'm saying is that uh, money is not the glue that keeps things together so much as we've been taught it is. It's a tool to survive, and that's it. Don't make it your God or you know your wherewithal, and things will kind of be good. But you just uh, you can't be lazy in life and expect everybody else to carry you. That's not how I mean it. But there's uh, things that just can't be done because you have money that's i guess what i was leaning towards what did i meet myself no no okay well now, some people got a lot of money they got a lot of got away with a lot of stuff for a long long time and they're miserable people uh money does not make a happy person i've met people in both sides of life and happy people broke happy people rich happy people middle class in the same with unhappy all through the thing. And uh, I don't know. For me, it eh, doesn't matter. I don't know what does matter. What matters to me is what I can see or put my hands on. And outside of that, I don't think I care about it all. Like, like Grimmer, Grimner said something similar to that on the text, I think, yesterday. Because, you know, how you got to stretch yourself uh, real thin to be all concerned about what Donald Trump says and care about it, you know, have a an emotional attachment to what, what this third party has to say about stuff that doesn't have anything to do with you <laughs> in the first place. Well, you do realize that American law does not have anything to do with you, right, Vincent? I kind of think it does. How? How? If you go against it, you'll find out. It's not what I said. I said it, it doesn't have anything to do with you, is what I said. And then you brought up until you cross it and challenge it. Well, then that's that's not how law is, is it? Different aspects, yeah. Well, look. well that's the way law should be when you when you, you talk about rules, right? Mm. So when you cross that boundary, that border of uh, what would be considered uh, to, to be unlawful. Okay. So, yeah. That see, then when you start splitting hairs, right. But Vincent, that's what I, that's why I'm bitching about that 150 or less. I mean, these laws, you don't need all these laws. These laws are a bunch of jibber jabber to keep useless idiots in fucking work. Jibber jabber fool. That's why they're lawyers. If they could do any fucking thing worth doing, they wouldn't have been lawyers. It, it's where smart people go to die. Law. Smart. Smart like you, Michael. No. 
you got to be incredibly intelligent to some level to be a lying fucking thief lawyer. It, but, I mean, once you get into a, a gang, you don't get out of the gang. You never get out of the gang. People, hey, did you <laughs> when I had them liars up against the wall in <laughs> Las Vegas and I put them in that little uh, – Oh, that little question there where it was uncomfortable, just enough where they had to laugh and make a joke about it. Hmm. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna call out the bar association. No, oh, you know, I was in the bar today thinking about the connection between the bar association <laughs> and the uh, uh, the actual physical bar I was sitting in. It make sense to you or not? Because I, yeah. I get these weird ideas, and I it just all of a sudden I was thinking about the bar association, and here I am in a Danish bar, and and it's so familiar. It's just like an American bar or a Scottish bar. They all look alike. You couldn't, I mean, except for the script, the different languages, you wouldn't know you're in a different different place if you weren't seeing different languages. All the all the settings and the the furniture and everything's similar. There's a theme to this whole thing. A theme. I got a theme. I'm smoking yeah. right. Well, okay. Well, I'm. I was thinking of the alcohol-driven world because even the people that do sell it know what alcohol is—the most horrible shit there is. But somebody is going to do it anyway. So I don't feel you can hold the person that's selling it responsible for what the person that bought it does with it. That's right. That's commerce. So, yeah. if your society is going to make that legal, deal with it. And if your society is going to make it illegal, then you got a problem with your society. <laughs> People will tend to go to the better product and, that, and try to prove that. Well, we've got such a perverted per, uh, personal idea of what the word legal means in the first place. How many people really know what the fuck they're dealing with when they get, hey, let's make this illegal. Wait a minute. How about if we don't? What if we didn't ban or prohibit any fucking thing? What if it was every fucking body for their self, the way it is anyway, but under under the guise of truth instead of this bullshit we live with? Well, that's fake yeah? out. Huh? What society is supposed to be is supposed to be standing there to, to protect the uh, collectiveness. Of, uh, <laughs> yeah. Of it spl splits us up in little groups and then stands back and makes some arguments out of everything. Th this thing is doomed. It's never going to fucking work. And these, these shills in Congress, those four women, distraction squad, yeah. those women are just as fucking fake as Trump is. Yeah, but nobody makes cool faces like AOC. Maybe not. I've still, I heard her voice once. I realize that politically what she's reading and her attitude and her words show you that she is a very left-wing left-winger. Okay. Passion. But the stupid part, where where does the stupid part comes in when she bashes Israel or Congress or this, you know, the way things are run? That's what these women are getting bashed for. But they're being called uh, Islamicists because they wear the stupid towel on her head or whatever. But that doesn't change the fact that, that she's telling the truth about the fucking Congress. <laughs> that part's true. Oh, yeah, these Congress people are fucking everybody, and you guys are just sitting back taking it. But when you do it with a towel on your head, the voter's going to look at you and see a, a Muslim and hate you for saying it. And their, you know, their concrete illusion is going to get more solid. Instead of chipping at it, it's going to get more solid. You're going to hold tighter. To that rock. Like that monkey that puts his hand in the cage to get the apple but can't get it out. <laughs> it's a that's old coon catching trick from uh, where the red fern grows. Maybe so, but they do it in politics. They do it in religion. They do it in education. I mean, when they made uh, education debt and the government bought it, what the hell were people, what, what were they thinking? Government buying your debt. <sighs> when debt becomes a commodity, you failed. There you go. Well, anyway. But that's, that's how we live. We fucking live in debt. And then everybody's worried about how much money you got. I, I hope I go out about $4 trillion in debt. But I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> but I would... Look at Trump. 
Trump's supposed to be this billionaire. He doesn't have anything. <laughs> he's, I really he's, don't think he does. This. Huh? It's just all numbers. It's, it's a bunch of blood relations. They own the property. Their families hold. They've got the guns to keep you off their shit. Fight with them and see what happens. Go, go try to get on the White House lawn uninvited. See how far you get with that. See? So the, the money is an illusion. It doesn't even fucking matter. $21 trillion in debt tells you there is no money. But the illusion is this guy lives in the White House and runs the Americas. <laughs> How many yeah. guys would it take to count out that kind of money in, say, just a day? More than we have. Yeah. I don't think it could be done physically. I mean, guys couldn't count it. No, out physically. No, that's what I mean. It's a, it's a story, Vince. Please. That's why I refuse to take this seriously. To, to that level of fear and, oh, they're gonna get me and all that kind of crap, you know? Because they're shooting people. I know that. I've seen that. But. Uh, I still don't think I'll do, I'll go out like that. Let's see if Grimmer can do a deal with Pena here in the uh, IRC. How, is there a cal- do a calculation, Grimmer, of mm. uh, how long would it take to count to one trillion, or even one billion for that matter? Which is an ex- extraordinarily huge amount of numbers all by themselves. See. Yeah, see, Becky gets the point. If you buy it, whatever it is, it's either you believe it, buy it, or you physically, financially buy it. Yeah, you're supporting the very thing that we're here to say, hey, this is not cool, people. And then we have people on the site that come on the site to remind us of how cool this shit truly is, in their opinion. And then we waste a lot of time trying to one-up the other guy when the other guy's just laughing his ass off because he ain't going to move his opinion. So it doesn't matter what you think about nothing. Thinking doesn't change the equation at all. I don't really know what does change things except how I spend money. And fuck, right back, you see, then you're back to the very fucking problem that shouldn't be there in the start. Money should be a tool like uh, electricity or gasoline, not, not a dependent in a slavery system. A conveyance. Yeah, there you go. Better word. Conve- or even convenience. Something to make some life easier. But when you've got people that are holding billions and billions of dollars, right, as a collective, and they're all billionaires, and then you have a couple of million people in these cities, three million in this city and a million in that city, and these people are dependent on the system that these billionaires made necessary to keep their billions. Well, this is the problem that we have. It's a disposable bullshit society. It's not, it's not real. It's real that it's happening, but the explanations you get for the shit that goes on are nonsense and lies. And they'll do anything to keep this... The 50th anniversary of the fake moon landing was recently. And people were all broken up about, oh, and there's still people trying to say it was a hoax. Oh, those poor people. The, it, you know, because the technology was lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. To on. regulation, because they've been regulated out of being able to use that technology. Are you out of your fucking mind? If the state wants to do something, they'll make a law to do it. So th- it's a bunch of crap. <laughs> There's no truth to it. Went to the moon. <laughs> Can't drill water in Africa, but they can go to the moon. <laughs> you know, I find that fucking amusing to admit myself, but because um, <laughs> Raider, Rob, you my boy, right on, man. What What did Rob have to say? Thanks, Rob. Oh, and, and cakes is man, man cakes is slapping you about the skull there, Mr. Vincenzo, because we're supposed to have a dork table one on one about how you see this crap and how I see. Hey, let's let's do that. Let's bring Chloe up because Chloe's name came up this morning again. No. Yeah. And it, it well, because the topic is interesting about the differences. Wait, wait, OK, well, I think the differences between me and you. Are absolutely freaking blinding right in front of everybody for them to see. 
And yet, and you basically get along pretty good with the disagreements. Because oddly enough, talking about sir, I'm I'm the one that's being conservative in one respect that you're not, and you're being conservative in a respect that I'm not on this the honesty principle about everybody. It should be able to speak their freaking mind if you like it or not. Period. That's the way you see it. That's the way I take what you what you've said over the years. Does, you want to say yeah. it? Say it. Well, okay. Most said earlier in chat, the 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 chat room is should there's a, emotional. I guess emotion should never be a part of the chat or something like that. Well, but I don't we know. Do with our with our perspectives, we do have emotion and part of that. You know, it's uh, part of the reasoning in the mind. Oh, okay, but well, we get distractions in the room from chatters. For example, yesterday's distraction was blaming specific generations for specific problems. That, if you have any information to actually give you some truth, you know it's the banking system, not the people that lived at the time of the system. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the population and everything to do with the bankers that were in power at the time of this problem that you see. All these problems in society are all financial. They're, they're all based on money. They're, the reasons we don't get along with each other when we don't get along with each other are generally based on financial problems. Financial disagreements, uh, not being capable of understanding this fucking lie-driven world we're living in and what it truly is. It's a fucking nightmare. And if you can find any freaking happiness in it, grab it, because most people can't. And I believe it's the design of the freaking game that we're in. It's not the people that play it. The game changes the players. You could go into politics, and you'd be all gung-ho. And then after you take a seat in politics and find out that you can't do that, you have to bow to Israel first, and you have to do what they tell you. Then you find out what this AOS, what's her, AOS, A, something like that, Alexandria somebody. Cortez. Okay, well, they're going to let her run her mouth for a while. Okay, now it'd be too obvious for her to be assassinated now, wouldn't it? I think that she's so small and it's such an unimportant, it's such an unimportant issue in the overall game. Who would want to kill her or why? For speaking up against the Jews in Congress. They took Gaddafi out. Now, they blamed it on this other shit, but it was all based on his fucking hatred for Israel and his spite for the petrodollar. He wanted to use gold and trade with Arabs. Fuck now, you, that's Americans. That's the thing that got him is he, he uh, bucked the petrodollar. Okay, well, that's these girls are more in tune with that side of the story than the American side, Vincent. I think she'd have more to worry about being knocked off by some wacko right winger. Well, it's the same thing, isn't it? Oh, crying out loud. Supporter of, what difference does it make? It's the the necessity to be in a large group to voice a negative opinion about something so you can have these problems is the point. I, that's what I was getting at. If, if I ever get into a bigger group than RLM, what for? What do I need it for? I have all the diversity in the fucking world in a chat room on Real Liberty Media. Because everybody in that room is just a little different than the other guy or girl. Nobody's exactly I, the same. I do have some good news for you. What? It will only take 31,709.79 years to count to one trillion. Yeah, I'll get started on that in the morning. But see, that's why I said, how, how can you... How can you listen to the government tell you that they're $21 trillion in debt, but you owe them money? What? what are you I, no man no we had no, to no, borrow no. it for uh, in our behalf well right they borrow money to this minute to pay for things tomorrow and it, it, they're running out of excuses this number is growing so big now now and the interest rates are so astronomical they can't pay them so they can't meet the debt interest rates on the debt itself, let alone the debt. So where can they go with this story any further? It's, it's over. And here we are, 
playing along anyhow. This is where I just find it impossible to, to take this life serious. You guys are joking, right? You know who the most important voice, important person's voice is to protect is uh, those of descent uh, other than your own. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. I know because I'm I just figure fuck it. But I don't run things, Vince. If I ran the world, I would arm every fucking buddy and tell them take out the weak ones first. Yeah, Grimner pointed out the uh, power of uh, the badge that I possess, uh, hmm. RLM Press. Yeah. Oh, we're going to go on an ego trip with Uncle Vinny? Yeah, man. Brag, brag, it. brag. Good, you deserve Laminate it. Laminate it. Listen, this is the secret, mister. Laminate it. Boom. Well, legally, what does laminating it do? I know what laminating is. I just don't know what's what purpose does it serve legally that you're so happy about. It makes it look uh, official or something, I guess. I don't know. I I said uh, my wow. paper, your paper. Yeah. Wow, because I had one of those things. I used, I used to make shit for the kids with it in the '90s with one of these like uh pl- things that had a pla. You put shit inside the plastic and it heated it up enough to melt the outsides and make something solid out of it, like the thing you're talking about this is like 30 years ago so it's a vague memory but hmm I, but still just because you laminate something that's that's it huh that fools all the kids i guess so i got a fake id when i was like 19 <sighs> and uh went up to nebraska name was zachariah jennings what by zach zachariah james wow Jennings. Jennings, when you was rat. when you was on the oh Jennings, yeah. back when that you were an outlaw. Like, no, that was pre-outlaw years. There, it's kind of like the build up for the the Man on the Run series. Yeah, yeah. So you could go to buy beers and stuff, you know. Mm. Or flat. I wrote this note here. I'm trying to decipher. Because it was at, probably at the time it was a good idea. I get these good ideas and I try to write them down so when we're on the radio I can bring them up. Then I forget. Yeah. I must be get. I think I'm getting old, Vince. I'm going to blame you. Uh, I'm blaming you. You'll be hearing from my lawyers. It's a bunch do of, you have good lawyers? Uh, no, but I'll Ooh. get some. We'll just That's tell them. I just show them my circumcision and my honker, and I'll get I'll get a good lawyer. I'll just tell them I was robbed by Goyam on the way to the office. <laughs> That's why I broke. <laughs> uh, they anti semitic minded me on the way over here. <laughs> and I'm temporarily indisposed. Uh, can you carry me for a couple of months? <laughs> Thanks, cakes is hot dogs for uh, facial fried hot dogs for lunch. Well, it's okay. Now, Grimner says, I like the way Grim speaks. It's perception based authorita to me. And I tell him back in this. I agree with that. But the guy that doesn't agree with you, he is in his own mind. He's uh, he's right, too. And he's the guy that votes and believes the cops don't pull people over unless they deserve it until it's him. And he finds out the hard way that it's, it's a business. These people ain't doing anything except make money. <laughs> You'll find out. But, you open uh, that bank that Rob dropped? What one trillion dollars looks like? No, should I? No, I was just I was schooling somebody about the hazards of the popo. Because the popo, the one Rob put, yeah, hold on. But uh, the cops, they're nobody to fuck with. They didn't. They didn't used to be this bad. What one trillion dollars looks like? Oh yeah, he was explaining it uh, in words, and those are pallets, by the way, and that's a football stadium, and those pallets are four foot high, <laughs> so yeah, that's a lot of paper, man. How many how many trees would it take to print that? Even I don't even know. A lot, a lot, a bunch. Yeah, More they than- had one, like trailer loads of of money in uh, Iraq. That, uh, that you know, discovering here and there. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's like the amount of money. It just 
Three, all right. Uh, what are you going to do? And here we go back to this normal living people, people that yeah, have a life like, like us. They we, have like snippers of a tree, right? Compared to the trees that are the money. You but, know, like a splinter. Well, would, are you saying that you would know what to do with $60 billion if you had it? Man, I would spend every bit of it. How? Oh. How? It's not yours in the first place. I, I'd try. But it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the banking system that holds it for you in the Federal Reserve currency. So I would buy it out with their own money. Okay, well, all I'm trying to get across to you is that somehow over the course of history, behind our backs, the lawyers have written these obscure laws in a way that you really need to know how to decipher all this shit to really make a good argument to prove that it's horseshit because it's done so well. It looks good. But the reality of banking is we're fucked and they've got all the money. You know what I never hear compared to history is her story. Well, why would any woman want to claim that? Oh, come on. That's kind of unfair. Because it's our... Nah. Nah. See, then you're going to do the, the sex divide thing and make it worse. The Magtow guys are going to all cry about it. and Oh, fuck me. It's a Kramer versus Kramer deal? I, I don't know. And, you know, that's one rare example of a female's behavior anyway. Well, wasn't it the kid divorcing himself from the parents? No, it was the uh, the father and the mother, and the mother decides as the kid's like seven or eight years old, she's had enough and wants to leave. So she leaves, just dumps him. Bye. Really? I thought the kid was the one. No, that was another film. This one was just specifically oh, about the husband and wife fighting over the kid in court. Because the, the wife dumps the kid on the male. The male learns how to take care of the kid and gets to, they start being cool. And then a couple of years later, the mom comes back and wants the kid back like a tomato. Is that Dustin Hoffman? Yeah. yeah. Jew boy. Was, Jew who, daddy. Yeah. Who was the woman? No, he was the husband. No. Dumbass. Oh, that was that uh, grandma movie he made. No, I was called? talking about who played the who was the woman in the uh, Kramer versus Kramer. I don't know some who, woman, who, some actress. But it was the point behind it is that the guy didn't have any idea how to take care of this child and how to cook or nothing. He just his wife just left him, so he had to learn all this crap and spend all this time with his kid and learn they get along. And then she comes back in the thing and wants the kid. Okay, well I'm back. I want the kid back. Wait a minute, <laughs> we're not dealing with the bag of sand here and it, that's the kind of shit that society wants you the individual to dwell on is helpless and arguing and fighting and not getting along and it works keeps people angry that's what counts oh yeah and then sports and rivalries and oh my team's better than your team and your guy doesn't get on his knees and pray to the right flag and all kinds of stupid shit i saw a you, thing about some guy this that or the other won't bow to the flag so nike's not gonna sell a certain shoe or something something similar to that some kind of boycott over a shoe because a football player won't get on his knees or or he does get on his knees i don't know maybe he's blowing a cat who knows you got cut out of the whole deal buddy you see in chat no money for you. Oh, all... I, yeah. you know what? I would be, that doesn't, I have no, no concern about stuff like good. I wouldn't want anybody in the world to go without anything, but I know they do. See? You could buy, you could buy uh, a doc, the doctor, uh, like a diamond collar with pearls. And <sighs> well, that see, box. it's all this competition and the design of the game is really this, disguised as freedom. And then you're told, you know, your dog-eat-dog world and all this crap, these stories you're told. Go out there and fight for what's yours. Well, you know what? If there's like a billion and three and the, there's a uh, hundred people and one guy has got a, a billion and the other hundred have to split up three, 
How the fuck do you guys get it, figure that's okay? I I don't get it. I don't know. I you know just the the stupidity of uh, commerce with s- greed. I think it's and it's, wow. But bam, I'm so stuttery over just the idea of being so full of yourself that you you think that you you're better than other people when no, it doesn't really work that way. Hey, Money man. doesn't change that. Glad you could stop by. It changes to it changes people's minds, maybe mentally, but it, nah, the reality is still the same. Remember that uh, football player that supposedly had the dogs, Michael Vick. He had, yeah, he was supposedly running an illegal dog uh, fighting ring or something. Wow, can you imagine how how deeply that man fucked up that they had to dig that far to find something to put him in jail for? Back in Texas, this guy down the way, he uh, he fought chickens every Sunday. Yeah. Well, that was the most brutal, brutal thing. Right. And I'm not saying the dog fighting isn't wrong, Vince. I'm saying that of all the crap this guy could have been charged with, right? You would think, because there's laws against every fucking thing. You can find any charge to charge somebody with. But they dug so deep that they went for the dog fighting thing. Wow. So what they, they put him in prison for then? Three years for, I guess, illegal dog rat fighting, whatever it was. But I, I remember the case being in the front line, run into it. Else, an off something on that. But he, maybe it was something else. Maybe he didn't have nothing to do with it. You don't know personally. No, I mean, it could be anything. It'd be like, uh, what was his uh, Cheech, or not Cheech Chong, Tommy Chong. Tommy Chong went to federal prison because he gave somebody permission to use his name. And they sold a bong using his name. And yep. it broke a federal fucking trade law. So Tommy got time and fed. <laughs> got like eight months or something. Yeah. That's still, I mean, club fed and all that. And he's a celebrity, but jail is jail. I don't care. Over pot. Over using your name. And I harp at people, Vinny. I go, hey, the most valuable thing you have in your existence is your signature. Guard your signature. And... Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, I don't like to put my name to uh, something that uh, wants to group me into um, certain what whatever that captures you, like you say, that signature, right? Do it. Capture we you. should do that's it. Got a lot of people in trouble and in prison is because they be putting their name to things. Right. Yeah, but they're in there in prison. Okay, and I've even read the the court's report. Of this version of it that 90% of the people in captivity in a prison are there with their own consent and they admit it yeah they admit what well, depends on what you read to find oh, certain shit they, but yeah out, because right? they, you got involved in the first place. you're representing see your straw man is the one they're charging but your physical you is the one they're punishing so how do you separate the two you can't I won't then tell you don't you go to court there you go. That's the trap. It's just, it's like trapping an animal. You're the animal. They'll come get you. Well, Once fuck them. Bait you in. See, they will. They'll bait you in and trap you and capture you. That's the technicality on the court thing is you have to go to that court or that court doesn't have any power. But once exactly. you're in the physical building, then then that's the end of that. You've submitted. They'll but, send eight for you. Well, yeah, but... Uh, it's not the. How do I? How do you try to explain it? Jeez, it's like a traffic ticket. If you have a traffic ticket in L.A., but you live in Las Vegas, they're not going to go to Las Vegas to prosecute you for that traffic ticket. You have to go to the court that the, it was issued in that jurisdiction, or it's no good. And that's life. You could have uh, a ticket in your own state get your license suspended for not paying it see but i see the fraud and the fake of the whole illusion based just on that one idea if it's not okay in this town why is it okay over here and vice versa why does it shift from one place to another because it's all fucking made up and the things that aren't made up don't steal don't shoot nobody or kill nobody uh don't wipe your ass with a, you know somebody's drapes in their living room. Some simple common sense things 
And that wasn't enough. They had to make all this other shit, safety belts to uh, jaywalking. Uh, now I see it's more and more laws every day. And now they want to, in California, they just passed a thing where, I forget the city or the county, but it was about you have to have your gun disarmed and, and locked up in your own home. I don't, unloaded. What fucking good is an unloaded, locked up gun in a home? Why bother? There's no point to even having it then. You might as well just open up your front door and leave a trail, you know, and lay on at the end of the trail on your fucking face. Put a sign on your door. Same thing. Better. You know what I mean. You're, because yeah, it's fuck. a, it's an angry gun loving fucking world that you're living in out there. Not me. In Cal- I'm talking about in California, not you, but Californians are. Because I'm from there, man. I'm told plenty of people had the weapons. You could get guns, 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 fucking guns. Right, and it's bigger and more crowded now than it was when I lived in it. So that tells me at this point that you know what you can find in L.A. without a problem. A gun. A gun. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, most people that buy guns don't use them anyway. Very rarely do people bother with a gun. That's why there's so little gun crime. Most of the gun crime we have is from the authority. Controlling the gun crime. You hear what uh, Moose is telling you? No, what? I, what do, 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 Moose. Uh, it is not made up to the cops. They take their system very seriously. Well, I know. I When I was young... I spent about a year with some people, and the husband guy was a cop. And I learned all about the policia and how they behave and the truth. And, wow, I wasn't impressed. But the, the public is conned by they take this shit seriously or they don't. and It's just like anything else. Just like uh, believing that Trump's out there to protect you. He's not. He's out there to protect Trump. You're just in the way. Care he can give a fuck one way or about you or me or, or the next guy. He's just doing for himself and the people that he is in contact with. And the rest of us are what do you call that? Collateral damage Vince? <laughs> Collateral damage. <laughs> they they belittle us with something. But I don't see I'm not in it anymore, so I can't really see an American cop to make that assessment personally and go, Well, this guy don't take his so, job so seriously one way or the other. I just see the I wait, I just see the links of the cops that fucked up and did something stupid and got videotaped and exposed for it. I see a plenty of that. Well, it all depends on where you're at and what your appearance is, mm-hmm. and the situation, environment, uh, your actions. Really? Uh, I mean, if you uh if you're like a cop tries to pull you over and you smack into him and flee and then like jump out and run on foot, and you'll probably expect that they might shoot you. All right. Well, Grim's saying something. I'm not sure what he means. He says there's no such thing as gun crime, unless you mean someone stealing a gun. Yeah, because it takes somebody to use a weapon to hurt you in the first place. I just don't think that there's that many people that are that sick in the first place that really desire the weapon to cause harm a lot. I think the most of it is defense. And then that, think, what if everybody has a way were to have a gun that, uh, there'd be less so-called gun crime. Oh yeah. Guaranteed. Sure. You don't think there'd be more. No, like a, it doesn't work that way. Man. No, I, I'll show a it like this. You, you walk into a, a, a building, and you put a table in the center of it, and on that table you put a pound of heroin and um and a bag of needles, and you put a big sign that says free, and that fucking pile is going to sit there. Now, if you hide that thing under five boxes in a corner of a room, somebody's going to steal it. Yeah. You know, because uh, in Cowboy Lot what? has said many things, but... Uh, well, one thing he said is very important. You don't fence goats out, or you don't fence them in, you fence them out. Yeah, That's yeah. Cause, but he yeah. says if you lock a gate, somebody will tear it down. <laughs> but if you yeah. if you just, you know, latch it, and uh, maybe even just put a sign there, or close the gate behind you, 
You'll never have a problem. And the moral of the story, in your words, is... Don't tell me no. Oh, yeah. that's the, yeah, I guess that's the point I was making, is that when you make something available and plentiful, nobody fucking wants it. But when you tell them you can't have this, then somebody's going to steal it. And then they're going to, because they stole it, then five other people are going to want to buy it from the guy that stole it because he stole it. It's got to be something. What did you steal? And that, you know, that negative wave that it draws keeps that alive. Great. Huh? But it's instigated by the people with the freaking money from the start. If there's nothing to steal, nobody steals. So, where do you get seriously involved in life where stealing becomes part of it? When there's an abundance and a relative shortage. It's got to be a social imbalance for you to want to go into that in the first place. Or why bother? When you control all the systems, then you can create artificial uh, uh, scarcity. Well, I would think that the... the freaking threat of prison as a, a result of not being creative enough to work within the confines of the fucking law would be enough to keep people, you know, relatively nonviolent. But no, it doesn't seem to work. I don't know why. And I can only assume it's because of the the shortages and the uh, un, this is uh, not abundant here. You can't have that. Oh, if you want an education, you have to go in debt for $100,000. Shit like this. That. The greater the risk, the greater the reward. It's part of how the uh, operating system works. Okay, so I live over here in this freaking uh, socialist country. I guess a national socialist. I don't know what, what the current theme, title, name they got is. But I would say from the people that I've encountered... This is more, it's a socialist society. And the people that I encounter are okay with their role in society, no matter how much money they got or don't have. And regarding the, the bar owner that pays the taxes to support the guy that lives off the taxes, there's no anger. They're cool. They go, well, they're going to do that. Oh, it's all right. That's why we have the system to protect that, because that person's not quite all there. And they're probably better off drawing money off the government than being uh, put in a position to have to steal to survive. Terrible injury. But that's the way, okay, and it's a small enough uh, population here in this area that it doesn't have a large population of people that fit that category. They're there, and there's help for them if they want it, and they some of them take it and some of them kind of toy with it. And the society, it doesn't punish them. Once they're already there, they don't keep punishing them. They're as punished as they're going to ever get with their, first, their addiction to whatever they're addicted to. And the person that has the addiction knows it. These people are very different than anybody I've met so far. Addicted people? Well, the like I've met a few people that like to drink their drink. They're the outside in the street drinkers. And two of them have mentioned to me, I drink way too much and I know it. But, and you know, that they go, I know. You know. I would never insinuate anything to them anyway. It's not my business. They don't do anything to me. It's not, no, they're not threatening. They're just guys in the street. So it would never come up in conversation from me, but they volunteered it. So it lets you know that, hey, yeah, I know I drink too much, so uh, whatever. That's there where you're at now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's a, like a handful of people that, that daily drinkers out at the area where they drink. So but, they're, they're like functional alcoholics, or are they just mm -hmm. bums? I know. There's, I don't think there's homeless. It's not a homeless problem. It's a, this is how they associate with each other. It's different. It's like a tradition or something. But they're, they all live somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And just they like to be out gathered in their big group. <laughs> it's I call them the town council. And oh, so there's like a, a, a number of them. Sometimes there's a 10. Sometimes hmm. there's two. It just depends. And yeah, the, the weather. And, but 
it, this is the kind of uh, society that whatever whoever runs the society. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you all right? Yeah. Hold okay. On a second. Yeah. Oh. Well, the society itself, the people in control, don't take what these folks do as any kind of threat. They're, they don't hurt anyone. They're just drinking in the public. And whatever arguments or disagreements they might ever have, I've never seen one. I'm sure they have them. And every once in a while, somebody will get a little drunk, maybe yelling a little bit. But no violence, just drunk girl, yuck, yuck, yuck. Or, uh, that's about the extent of it so far. Four, uh, it's been four and a half years. I think we've been here four and a half. I lose track. Oh, we got married. Let's see. Five years of marriage. Well, we've been here about four years and change. And I'm stalling until my partner, Vinny, gets back. We were having an in-depth conversation about the bullshit of money. Oh, did, I... oh, did you want? Oh, I did unmute. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so what about people of other uh, um, addictive uh, personalities? That, say back in the 70s, maybe, did you go uh, uh, like coke addicts? Um, <laughs> heroin addicts or... no I didn't run into any of that until the, the 80s I was uh, yeah I was I got into the bar thing in about 86 given when I was in New York that's when I started found out about drugs woo but in the 70s it was just weed weed and beer maybe a little alcohol I tried drinking like vodkas and shit like that. It always fucked me up so bad I couldn't enjoy the ride. And I'd get sick, so I, I don't drink that kind of white liquor. But the whiskey, sometimes I can drink them without getting into too much shit. Huh, honey? <laughs> Whiskey's too rough and cocaine costs too much. Well, well I, I don't know what it costs anymore. I haven't known what it costs since what? 19 I think the I played with it in the end of the 80s from 86 to 90 ish and then I started to leave the country and eh, gave it up to go do something else I think it was 1982 first time I ever tried cocaine mm. it was like pure from South America off the tanker yeah but see it's all that it's the appeal of of easy money uh, I guess part of that shit that lifestyle and then the being drinking in public, you can drink more. I could drink a lot more alcohol if I was um, doing coke because, yeah, I'm a little guy, man, and I don't have a tolerance to alcohol. I'm too small for it. You can only put so much of anything into a receptacle, and you're going to have a mess. <laughs> so <laughs> there's that, right? Hold on a second, man. All right. There's the new Brazilian has joined in chat room who's that uh goober goober who was talking and we got rituals in here again too i think he came back on see and we got these we got these chat rooms i mean there's more and more chat rooms there's got to be a shitload of these rooms all over the place because when uh, other people do their links as we do ours we just don't have the video going along with it they've got people in their chat rooms that they talk to yeah. Like, remember when I, w I was telling you about Crazy Jerry over at BitChute? Yeah. Man, the guy's he's really involved in the Masons. He knows his Mason stuff inside out. But he's very emotional about it all. He's, uh, he's not so much just telling you something. He's really involved in it. So his videos are very uh, entertaining to me and Sark. We like to keep up with Crazy Jerry. And lately, he's not been doing much. And I don't know if that's BitChute not putting him on or if it's because he slowed down or what. But hmm. this is why I rely on the small size of the RLM instead of being like so big, you can be moved and not found. You go to RLM, boom. Hey, Grim, what's up? Who's this? <laughs> yeah. Because we're always we're always bugging Uncle Grimmy to help us with something. I had I had a problem before the show started. I thought turned out to be I just hit hits a wrong thing, so I just started the thing over again. I shut it down. And went ah, it's little three little things. Click click click. I can do this twice without having to you know seek medical help. So I did. 
But at first, I panicked. I thought, because, you know, when you do something wrong, it's just like, holy, f especially on a computer. Oh, man. These computers are cruel, Vinny. They are, huh? That's funny, Moosey. What's up? The, uh, the picture after a music festival for three days. She gone native. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you right now, the only, uh, I don't think there's really much difference. Drugs don't, uh, the drugs that I've used, except for mushrooms and acid, uh, did not so much affect me on a mental kind of a scale as much as a physical scale. And I have this thing about it. if I get tired, I've got the ability. When when I was young, I just go down, lay down, go to sleep, do coke all evening with people, and go home, go to bed. It made everybody freak out. How do you fucking do that? I don't know. I just do. And I think it's a lot of it because I'm so small. I don't I don't take as much of anything as other people do. So, yeah. Being little has its advantages in life in areas that would surprise you. <laughs> Cutting people up, that sounds like a saw going in the background. Are you guys in the basement? What's going on? Nah, she's making coffee in the kitchen. I get her the uh, beans that she's got a grinder. Oh, she's got an electric I... grinder. And she went to make, yeah, she went to this grinder machine thing. So I go and get her the kind of beans that she likes. She grinds them up, and puts them in the thing, makes coffee. <laughs> See, all this complicated 21st century shit. Right. What about the old bean? You just reminded me that. I heard that uh, old, earlier. Old? Yeah. How do you mean old bean? A colloquialism. <laughs> I don't... Oh, yeah, old bean. The English... Yeah, that's what the English used to say. It was a, like a slang for, hey, man. Yeah, old bean. Chip, chap, wait. Chip, uh, chap. That's another one. Boy, when I got to England my first time, I had no idea about English slang. And some girl in a pub says to me, got a fag? And I looked at her, and I didn't know what the fuck to say to her. I I don't remember what I said to her, but it was something similar to, I don't know what that is. <laughs> what are you talking about? Something like that. And it turned out to be a cigarette. I went, oh, yeah, sure, you can have a cigarette. And a dog end? I don't remember what they called that, but I remember they called a cigarette a fag, and it, it cracked me up for years. Now I'm over it, but wow, the beginning. Well, you remember uh, Jethro Tull and Aqual Aqualung. Well, I remember the music. Yeah, I didn't meet him. Dog end. Ah, cigar butts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, if sure. they... Not I, to be around. But I mean... I'm being beans by know me. Yeah, I was being specific about the time I was there and what they were saying at the time, not 50 years ago. Now, I'd only been there about three times, I think. Four? Three or four, something like that. Uh, three or four. Well, I went to Scotland to in the 90s. Yeah, it was four times, yeah. Uh, and I had a train ticket attached to the to the airline ticket. I don't have any idea. My folks get these wild hairs up their ass when they were alive. And they'd send me a message and say, hey, we want you to come visit for a little while. Are you doing anything important? And I'd say yes or no. And if I say yeah, I'd get these airline tickets round trip to where I was and where, you know, where they're at. And the last one had a trip to... Um, London on the train from uh, the hell city was it not Glasgow uh, hmm. I can't think of the Scottish t it was a, a on the northeast of or northwest of Scotland somewhere up there anyway so I had this train ride to take and I figured well be, I'm I'm in England I'm in Scotland I'm going to use this thing while I got an opportunity and what turned up happened and I've told the story before but I don't I don't think you were on the dark table when I mentioned it I was the last human being to see my grandmother alive because of that train ticket. I went down to visit her. And so I get down there just to London, and she says, well, you, th the neighborhood isn't the same. You're not going to like it as much as you did when you were here back before. And she said, you really should just, uh, just, you know, 
go visit your uncle. And she shooed me away, which is the opposite. And she was weird. She was like, oh, and your hair looks so wonderful. And before all that, years before when I had long hair, she, why don't you cut your hair, you damn dirty hippie? And it turned into this one, the last night I see her into, oh, how wonderful I was. And she, everything was great. But she thought I should go visit my uncle instead of staying with her. And apparently I get back. I, this is uh, the first night I get to London. So I go off to go to um, Nottingham to go visit my uncle. But I have a week to, to, or something like that. It was either a three days or a week in the middle of this from my grandmother to my uncle. And she changed it all with shooing me away. Hmm. That was the trip where I met the guy on the train, and I'm going. I told him I'm looking for a pub and a bar, or a, a pub and a hotel, a room and a bed, or something like that. This is your lucky night, mate. And I went, holy fuck, I've met the devil. <laughs> but, <clears throat> Got all the place for you in the basement. Huh? Yeah, but that was the the. I was the last person, that, and when I get back to Scotland after this whole extravaganza with my other family. I found out my my grandmother had a stroke and died after I left. And had I been there, I might have been able to, to help her or whatever, but she didn't want me around, threw me out. Time to go. Weird. Well, I don't have a bad feeling about it, but my poor mother was, you know, my mom and me have been, well, while she was alive too, well, me and my mom were fairly close. And just, I was always involved in the, the weirdest shit in the family. I was the last one to see this person or, I was in town when this happened and that happened because I was the traveler. So it was kind of a, like a, an important thing for, for uh, the family that I was at least there and I saw her. <laughs> Weird, huh? And I'm the black sheep. I'm the one that, that never was uh, quite accepted. It's, it's a weird story, I suppose. I don't know. Maybe it's common. Yeah, it's like timing came together. Right. Well, you can look at your life in whatever light you feel is appropriate, and you can take a disaster like that and turn it into something positive, because no matter how bad it, it is, the, my grandmother passed. No matter how how it happened, it happened. So it's you, you can't make it worse. You can only make it better. Is what I'm getting at. And so we we tended to look at the bright side. Well, you got to see her before she went, and you know, that's it had to make her feel good because yeah. I was her, her oldest grandchild. Yeah, that's cool. So, yeah, well, with all that symbolism and family and, and crap like that. And uh, I was the black sheep in the family. And, and now I've outlived them all except my brother. So I don't know. I'm still the black sheep in the family. <laughs> I'm never going to change. And living in Denmark is... Uh, it's not even a result of not getting along with my family. The, living in Denmark was a result of living my life and just following where the door went to, seeing what was over the hill. Yeah. Mm. I've done that. Hey, did yeah. you see that? Been defined, sir. Defined? Yeah. What, salient? No. No, Flat. Uh, flash. Oh, intrusive verb to burst forth into or as if into flame. <laughs> yeah, well, I tried to improve my cult membership, but the wife said no. Uh, I can't be a cult leader. Oh, man. What am I going to do, Vinny? You, sh you must conspire. She said no. My wife said I can't be a cult leader. <laughs> Can you, can you imagine how many lives that Cirque is saving by doing that? You know, I could go all, hey, I could go all statist or maybe religious, start a religion channel and tell people to send me all their money. i get them hooked up with God, baby. You watch. What if you offered her a new toaster, maybe, or a, another coffee grinder or better beans? <laughs> well... That wouldn't work because I think my wife knows the truth about me at that level is I don't bargain. But you do give 20% off. Absolutely. But I never, I never bargain. I either comply or I don't, but that's I don't, it. I don't bargain. Bargaining. Nah, that's given in. 
no, no, hey, no. I, I need to step away for about mm. a minute. Mm. I'll, be, I'll, be back okay. I'll cover the finer points of being told what to believe. Ladies and gentlemen of the world, <laughs> do you guys think that you're told what to believe? Or do you believe that you believe what you believe because you believe it? Or is it possible that maybe we have been told things that in a certain way or certain story sounds so good that not believing it makes you feel stupid? Because I have that problem. You know what that problem's with? The globe. Because <laughs> I've said many times, I don't care if it's round or not, but to this moment in my life, I've yet to see any proof that it is. Hmm. Wonder why that comes to mind. But, see, then I've told you guys that listen to the shows that I do, my version of proof is the story that I like. So if somebody has what they call proof that something is true and they show it to me, if I don't mentally agree with or like their answer, how can their proof persuade me that it's proof? I, I'm confused. I need, I need Benny back to help me through this dilemma. Hmm. Because uh, I'd like to think that I make up my mind all by myself, but I don't think I do. What's up, Benny? <clears throat> right on time. Yeah, I heard you get back. I was <laughs> just stalling with you know, being told what to believe or do I believe what I believe because I believe it or because I know it or because I believe I believe it. <laughs> I believe I believe. Well, me and you differ on certain topics about belief system things, I would say. Yeah, I would say. I, I think it's more in the expression of the explanation than the idea behind it. Would you say that's fair to assume? Well, I don't know. That Not that it doesn't exist. It's that it is identified in ways with you that aren't identified with me. Huh? It's perspective. Okay, there you go. See, it's a matter of perspective. Well, then it can't be both true and not true. It's got to be one or the other. It's got to be an absolute, right? What does purple taste like? Ah, see, there you go. So no matter where you go with this question, you're always going to end up back at it's up to the person asking it. Am I correct? You got a frog. What's that? Uh, frogger. But, hey, yeah, I just see frog come in. But, hey, frog, uh, well, what do you think? Do you think that there, that you would ever try to lead somebody to the answer or would you always do what you've done and lead them back to the question? I like the answer to be demonstrated in the question, I'd say, maybe. Hmm. Well, uh, then there's a lot of ways to do that. Because uh, there's so many things that you can't explain using our limited knowledge that we have. Even though we got internet in front of us and you can prove this and that and crap like that, shit's not what I mean. Hands-on fucking understanding is not the same as reading a book. We have words, and that's it's, uh, the timing of the frog. You know what I noticed was a great bond growing uh, amongst the RLM folkies? Gardening. Gardening, yeah. Yeah. Got, you know when you... But I got bugs, man, eating it up. Oh, you're fueling the... Get some diatomaceous earth, boy. I, oh, bless you. Yeah. But, yeah. Anyway. I, and deep rabbits too but you can get diatomaceous earth where you're at right some uh stashed away somewhere well here. find it you bonehead write down write a note to yourself to look for it because you'll forget i'll forget to remind you or something anyway it'll be gone so write it down yeah cut I your figure it. write it on the wall in blood diatomaceous I got, earth <clears throat> i got a uh, i got a tiny little tomato that's growing now oh i have some squash and some came along and yeah. ate part of it ah oh. Uh, I think I got squash bugs too. Ah, you see, well, you're more communist than you think. You're feeding the whole damn neighborhood. <laughs> I think that's that's pretty much what communists are. Is I've been eating with them, though. People Taking that around. you know what communists seem to me to be is people that can't turn you away because you don't have something to eat. You don't have no money to pay for your food. 
the communists, they're, they're not about all that. And I found out that the, the guy that, that begs down at the grocery store, he's Romanian. And the, this other guy, the kid I met earlier, this grown man, 42 years old, he's... Does he, he dress like a gypsy? That I, would be well, fun. no, but he's, he's, he wears darkish clothes and a cap. And he's got a beard, so he looks he looks the part of uh, the play, the part he's playing, and he's a really nice guy. So this whole thing is just it's really kind of like a, a a Hamlet thing. It's a disaster in fucking life, and we're just making the best of it. Does he have like a violin? No, we had a guy that played the um, what do you call it, the accordion, but. It, uh-huh. It kept breaking. It was such an old machine. It kept breaking down on. And one day he goes, "Can you buy me some glue to fix the key?" And I did, and he fixed it, and didn't stay stuck. It didn't stay working. He he abandoned the town, went somewhere else, in search of a new accordion, perhaps. And then we got the Romanian guy in his place, in his stead, that doesn't play music. Ah, the union. Uh, the balance. The, oh, Vincent, when you, you think they have a union, maybe it's like no. We own- like a one bum town when you get smaller in scale you, and can look at life differently than in the big city and scale it different things change there's it's a it's an ability that you can either put in your in front of yourself or not it's a choice i'm making you know to calculate by by size you follow that kind of logic or does it elude you yeah, so like uh, the environment will only allow for so much. So many people, right? That's why I said, man, if this if this area was more crowded than it is, it wouldn't work. And it's not. It's just there was a lull today. Cirque is asleep on the couch, taking an afternoon nap. This is before the show, and I went out back in the backyard, and there's no cars on the road. I don't hear any traffic at this point, and I can hear all the birds whistling and chirping and being birds. And then after a period of time, I heard a car again. But there was, you know, there's just periods in this country living thing where you get a moment of peace from the trappings of the world. Yes, it's beautiful, especially from where I'm at. But in the city... Okay, when I lived in a city, I didn't give a shit about the peace and quiet in the fucking country. I was doing a city, pal. And that's the whole point. My evolvement into this age has gone through many changes mentally. You know, there's things I will do today I wouldn't do 30 years ago and vice versa. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. Like travel to Denmark to get you know to meet somebody and then go hey I think I'm gonna marry this crazy woman she's too cool and do it you know not just think about doing stuff but I've been one of those people who's been fortunate enough to uh, do the weirdest fucking things that other people wouldn't think of doing I suppose most girls getting boomers thunder boomers oh no this weather I think it's all that harp interference. The big old it's what I believe. What do you golf. believe? Huh? Huh? Because, like you said in the earlier part of the show, you know, when you start talking chemtrails and all that kind of uh, what do you call them? So, uh, conspiracy theorist jargon. You know, you start making the voter sweat. Because yeah, their their fucking life depends on that inoculation not being everything that we say it is. And we know it is. It's exactly the garbage we're telling you it is, it is. And you're trusting fucking lion thieves to not fuck you, and they're gonna. Look, there's there's the bit stamp, Bitcoin. Mm. I don't know what that means, but I'll go with it. It was like 15,000 back down to 10. I think it had gone down to, what, 3,000? Yeah, it was down to 3. Oh, don't... This is another government game, please. Anything like, this big. No, 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 no. Man, the you, people make money off that. I don't care. So what? So what? People make money off fucking medicine, too. You got, it's got fucking big pharma stock? Make some hey, money. Go feel, buy into that Bill Gates crap, that, uh, what is it? Windows. There you go. If you want money, there's money to make. 
It's not about money. Money is the fucking opposite of what you really want. You just don't know it. That's all right. It's I have you. Uh, money does not buy you anything that you cannot just walk into by chance. I'm telling you from living living life, real life does not involve all this freaking drama that we see. That's TV. I see a flying pig. People are fucking, not, you know, they give you what you give them, period. That's how they are. That's how we are. That's how I are. <laughs> If you fuck with me, I don't care who you are. Your status is not held by your fucking title. Your status is held by your behavior. Ask my brother. <laughs> if I don't get what I want, you ain't going to get what you want. And what I want is always uh, a lack of something. <laughs> it's not what you do that, you know, sometimes what you don't do is what I want. You understand that? Or was that too deep? Yeah, it's pretty deep, man. Pretty mm -hmm. deep. Well, you, you can't you can't tell me that you have not encountered people in your life that did not care for your behavior, Vincent. That your behavior wasn't an issue in that relationship, and they said, "Hey, you do this or get out." Yeah, I don't. I'm you, not good with ultimatums. Right, but there you go. But you you've never had that happen. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I'm saying there's a world out there, not you and me, out there, out somewhere, out there, that doesn't live like that. They don't go through those kind of traumatic fucking changes with people that tell them, oh, you can trust me, and then the fucking minute you trust them, they lie to you. So, you know, whatever position they hold in your life, if they're willing to lie to you, fuck them. <laughs> it's not worth it. So, I've got a... Hmm, got terrible histories with people because i wouldn't take their shit oh i said i was sorry i apologize yeah well you're gonna do it again <laughs> you're doing it now <laughs> yeah but people we're all insane to a little bit you know what i mean a little point yeah people wherever you go uh well where have you been i've been everywhere man mm. Across the desert's bare. Have you ever sailed? Yes, I have in a small boat. Mm. Me too. About a 40-something footer, maybe 50. It wasn't very big. It was, just, But the Sea of Cortez, where'd you go? Much smaller. And Lake Mead. And oh, Lake. Okay. I was meaning sailing like on a sea. Also in a, a, a lake in Louisiana. Oh, okay. No, I've done jet skiing in lakes. And, uh, and I yeah. but I went on this one time I went sailing it was the weirdest damn trip of my whole freaking life but I enjoyed it got to see the whales uh, checking out the boat and the dolphins were feeding you could see them feeding off about I don't know maybe a hundred yards off the side of the boat there was a big herd of them and they what they do is they they move in motion forward and dive and I guess they eat shit while they're moving or something but they move in this big pack it's insane and incredible at the same time. I used to go out of Long Beach Harbor uh, pretty often. A friend had a, I guess it was about a, I don't know, 30-something footer. It had a diesel engine in it. Are you um, old enough to remember the Pike? The Pike? Yeah, Long Beach Pike. Uh, I don't. It lasted until the early 70s. Well, you could Google it, but you said Long Beach. I thought you meant California. Yeah, yeah, Long Beach. Yeah. yeah, the Pike. Oh, well, I'm five years older than you, I think. So I might, because they took it, I think they took it, took it all down in the middle of the 70s or the end of the 70s. Yeah, Santa Monica. And, and yeah, that's a little further north. And Santa Monica Pier. Then you get up further, you go to Malibu. <laughs> yeah. Five drop. God Malibu. damn, I used to hitchhike the Coast Highway all the way from down in, uh, Malibu, I'd probably start about there, Malibu, and go up as far north as I could get. Oregon sometimes before I'd split off and go off to the 101. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, Hearst Castle's on the Coast Highway in California. It's a, back in the day, it was a spectacular ride, too. Before, it, yeah, there was just a few restaurants along the road, and you had to, uh, you had to be patient, I think, in those days. You, you, I had a, what? 
I had a big whale swim under our boat one time out there. Uh, what is it? Queen it, Point or something like that. Part out of uh, Queen something, I think. What out state? Of, in California. <laughs> Flashback the sailor. <laughs> I know I've told that story about the sailing thing, too. It was so embarrassing when it was all over with. Is that these guys, they were fishing. Well, they let me steer the boat and all this shit. So I'm keeping the boat going, and I'm drinking this beer. And I'm in the heat. And they know what I don't know is the combination of sea, beer, and new is going to slap you right in the head. You're going to pass out. And sure as fuck what happened, too. But before I passed out, they'd caught a, bu- a fish. So when they caught the fish, it was blue. When I woke up, there was no blue fish. Do you know what color the fish was? Red. It was yellow. Yellow. So I, I'm like, okay. I knew I was drunk and uh, a little bit high here. But so where'd the blue fish go? What blue fish? So these guys teased me about you know, <laughs> We never caught a bluefish. It's been yellow the whole time. What are you talking about? <laughs> and it turns out I didn't know that when they brought it on deck, it was going to, of course, die and then turn into this yellow color for a period of time. <laughs> they, they kept that part from me. But, yeah, my sailing, boy, I'll tell you, I, I learned quickly. First, I should have known better in the first place because I had to get my passport stamped to even get on the boat. Law, maritime law. Wow. Crazy. Man. If we were, if, if them two fellows had been out on that boat with me on board it, and Coast Guard would have approached that boat, and I hadn't had a stamp passport, we're all fucked. Really? Well, yeah, because you're, uh, you're transporting a human being over the water without paperwork, pal. You're a smuggler at that point. Who the so fuck is he? Well, can't even get in a boat and, like, Sail away. See, Cortez was apparently international water. Uh, you you got to see. You got to have their permission to travel. You can't just do whatever you want. <laughs> this is so deep, so deep rooted. The only thing I really regret about that particular story is the physical passport. I left it behind me in North Carolina and didn't demand to have it. I should have thought of it. And I, ooh, of all the possessions I had, I wish I would have kept that passport. You had to get another one. Well, right, eventually, but the original passport has the stamps of all the places that I went on that passport. Right. So then now the new one, of course, doesn't have the old stamps. So, the, so there's no physical proof of all these places, these exotic places I've told people, yeah, I've gone here and I've done that. And, and I used to have my passport and go, see, there's my stamp when I was, it was cool as fuck. And now I'm old, now I'm old and I don't have the passport to show for it. That's all. Hey, we- we run up against the uh, end of a couple of hours. Well, uh, I got kind of yucky. I got stoned and felt happy for a bit. Thanks a oh, lot for dork yeah. tabling with me today. But you, and we had to give Cakes a break from reading. He likes it better when we just talk shit. Yakety yak. That's why I'm Vinny Vernacular. And uh, if you if Chuck wants to do something, tell him. You know, let me know. Don't. Ten minutes before I do something, I need a little bit of notice. I'm eight hours ahead of you guys, so yeah, well, we'll, I miss messages. And but you know, I I guess I deserve the ribbing. But I miss messages. I misunderstand what I see. So be a little patient with me, bud. If you want to do a program, be happy to. Okay. I just don't have any idea what topic because you're a talker, and I want to wow. say something too, Chuck. Not just Stop. you. <laughs> Never mind. I'm being funny. Yeah. Do the yeah, lineup. Yeah. Do the lineup, eat it. Do the fucking lineup or I'll knock you in the head. Oh, bro, at no, bro. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Blues, that's right. Come about 15 minutes earlier and hear them tune up. And then we'll be playing some fast finger trivia games right here at reallibertymedia.com in the chat channel. Come on along. Three hours later, noon o'clock on the left coast, Hal Anthony comes from behind the woodshed mm. with Otis in the news. Monday, it's Grim Leftovers at 7 p.m. on the East Coast. Tuesday, we've got Mr. Flash somebody at 2 a.m. in America, east side of the country. They're doing some, uh, uh, well, he's contrasting the occupation all by himself in a perfect world. I am Wednesday. We've got Grammy in their rocket chair at 7 o'clock. 
And again on Friday and back up to Thursday, we've got Flash at what time is it then on Thursday? Two o'clock? Two o'clock on the East Coast. That's yeah. That's the normal one. Twenty percent off. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Uh, Friday, uh sometimes I'm uh turn or tunicating uh what matters at Ponder Gander. Friday's at noon. Mm-hmm. And maybe again at seven. Well, noon my time, let me say. And Grimner and Moose Girl are back at 11 Eastern with T. Freakers. Ball, y'all. Spelled with two E's. Free. Be free. Mm. Fly, fly, fly. And again, back here. Mm. And then Shabbat Shalom. By your favorite Jew and mine, Mr. Fly Somebody on the dork table. I, I think the correct term, sir, is Jew-like substance. Okay. <laughs> Measure your nose. <laughs> Official ruling on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The circumcision and the nose are a dead giveaway. Yeah. <laughs> <All> right, thanks. <sighs> and they look so much alike. See ya. <laughs>